Let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the Sabbath day, Lord. A time of rest, of repose, a time that we can spend with you, Father. We pray that, God, you will be with us today, that this entire worship service will be in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the scripture reading, let us open our Bible, or you can find it also on the cover of your bulletin. It's uh, Isaiah 61, verse 1. I read from the New King James Version. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach, to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are born. Today, we are very happy to have uh, Brother Anandan, or Elder Anandan, from the Indian Church, uh, preaching for us regarding his media ministry. So, Elder Anandan is the general manager of El Piso here in Singapore, but he is also helping us at the radio B107 FM as a technical person, support person, and doing also the engineering works in Batam. Now let us give the time to Elder Anandan. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Right. I was wondering for a minute whether I was lost. <laughs> you know, God is uh, This morning, it was raining heavy in Bishan. Pretty bad rain. Um, so I told my wife, I said, look, uh, I will come pick you up. There's a shade, you know, a little further from where we come down. So I told her I will pick you up over there. Apparently she wasn't listening. So... Um, I took the umbrella, went across. Of course, I got wet and all, and I was hoping that she wouldn't get drenched. So I went to the car and opened the door, closed it, all the stuff there, and started the engine. And then I hear her shouting. I hear her shouting, calling out to me. She thought I forgot to pick her up, to bring her over to the car. I mean, like the umbrella is raining, you know what it's like, and so, but I. I'm out of the car. Once again, I get wet and all, go back to her and say, what's the problem? She says, you forgot me. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a sensation of being lost. You know, a sensation of being lost. You know, this morning we are talking about being lost and found. We are of the opinion, all of us, that we have been found. Usually, I mean, that's how we feel when we talk to somebody else. We are always saying... Uh, we are approaching the lost people, the people who have not been saved. You know, we tend to feel like we are right where we belong. Would you mind if I take this off? I feel like David with, you know, all that armor. I, <laughs> thank you. Um, see, the, the important thing is for us to know that each one of us has a need. And God meets those needs, you see. Sometimes we don't even know what we need. And this is the funny thing about us. We think we know, and yet we don't know. Funny place to be. This morning we are delving a little into the scripture. Uh, we're looking at uh, John chapter 21. Yeah, John chapter 21. There's a nice story there. You must forgive me, I have to keep changing my glasses thanks to my eye specialist. He made it such that one of my eyes read and the other one sees distance. And it's pretty confusing for my brain. I have to have glasses that normalize and enable for me to read. And I have another one that is for the distance to see you. Yeah, you know, sometimes we make mistakes in life, yeah? Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana, 
in Galilee, and the sons of DBD and two other disciples were together. And then, verse 3, it says, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter. I'm going out to fish. Jesus had already appeared to the disciples, to Mary, two times before this occasion. This is the third time that Jesus is going to appear. And this occasion is very special because Simon obviously has already understood that Jesus has resurrected. Yeah, because remember, Jesus appeared to the disciples when they were there in the room hiding yeah, away from everybody else. It's terrible when you lose your leader and you're not sure what's happening next. You hear stories that he's been resurrected but you're not sure. You know, a lot of times, you and I, we are here, we haven't seen the resurrection or experienced the Christ. You haven't felt, you know, the holes in his hands. Neither have you felt the side like what Thomas wanted. He wanted to experience this in order that he will know that the Christ is resurrected. And this is the Christ. Don't it be somebody else that's impersonating him. So, as we sit this morning in church, one of the key questions is, have we come to realize that we have a risen Christ? Have we come to realize that he is real? That you find the promises that he has made are true for us today as much as it was at that time when he made it. See, each one of us has been called. We are here as a family, you know. I cannot exist on my own without you. That's the truth, you see. You support me and I support you. Each of us needs the other in order to exist, in order to function, to do the things that we need to do. God's call although being an individual call is also a collective one where we need to work together as a people. So Simon, Peter, is stewing in his own soup. Just think back to what he had done. Remember the three times that Simon or Peter denied the Christ? And each of those denials was something that went deeper and deeper as far as Peter was concerned. Okay? Because if you look at it, the same question was posed to him almost three times and the last time he vehemently denied that he knew anything, that he had anything to do with the Christ. And publicly even. So, you go back in time I think it's in Luke 5, uh, where he says very clearly that all of these can deny you, all of these can in some way turn away from you, I will not. That was what Simon Peter felt for himself, a pride that he was special, he was different. But you know what happened. Time proved him out. Three times he denied the Christ. And now Peter was amongst his other friends who had witnessed this. Hmm. Can you imagine? Privately, you have things that happen in your life. Private lah. Only you know about it. Yeah? So it doesn't matter, right? You know about it. You feel guilt. Okay. You go to God and you say, okay, no, Lord, I've made a mistake. Please help me. And it's done. How if what you are doing or what you have done is known to everybody? What does that feel like? It's a terrible place to be at, you know, especially when everybody else feels like as if they are good and they are fine and they don't have issues. And then you the one who has actually done this or, you know, who has experienced this thing that has gone wrong in your life, all of a sudden become the point of discussion. Everybody else is talking about this. You know, we are very much afraid of this, what other people say. You realize that, no? 
Life is like that. You may have done a thousand good things. The instant you do one bad, that one bad is the one that sticks up and everybody notices that one thing that's gone wrong. Simon was in that spot. Not just private, he had publicly denied the Christ three times. Public denial. Every other disciple knew about it. And so when the disciples are there together, even then Simon is in a category of his own because, oh, <laughs> this man, you know, he denied the Christ. He doesn't know anything about the Christ. But then I'm sitting there amongst the other disciples. All of them feel a little bit better than Simon. This was the thing, you know, he is boiling in his own stew, yeah, stewing in his own soup, whatever you want to call it. The truth is that Simon was going through a pretty bad patch in his time with God. So, in his mind, remember, he's a fisherman, yeah, he's a fisherman. That means, what does he do best? He knows how to fish. He goes out to do his fishing. So every day you find this was Simon's routine. He would get up in the morning, go out to the sea, check his net, go out in the boat, drop the nets, catch fish, come back, empty out everything, bring it for sale, clean the nets, make sure it, it's, it's all okay. And can you imagine, same thing, repeat, 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 every day. That's what Simon used to do. For some of us, it's like that, you know, I don't know, we have different careers, we have different things we do in life, but somehow or the other, we are caught in a cycle, every day is the same. I thank God for the Sabbath, you know, <laughs> because it's a wonderful break. It's a break away from everything that you do on the routine and God challenges you, okay, with things that you need to pay attention to. You can't run away from these things because these are realities you have to accost. And from Simon, you can learn a lot of things like this. Yeah? So this morning you find he is sitting there and he decides, actually it should be evening because, yeah, he's going out to fish and usually fish can see the net, you see, if you do fishing in the day. So fish can see the net and they'll avoid the net. And so, yeah, fishermen go out in the evening when the sun goes down, when the fish can't see the net. And so... Simon decides he will go out to fish. See, at the back of the mind, you have to have this thing that Jesus spoke to Simon very specifically. Let's just go read that portion if we can, yeah? Let me get my specs on. Okay, this is found in Luke 5. And I think we can take it from... The point at which, all right, Jesus sees the, the boats at the water's edge. So I'll read. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. This is the earlier occasion, yeah? When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water, let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish, their nets began to break and so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Then when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and he said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions, companions were aston astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John and sons of DBD, Simon's partners. And then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Or rather, you will be fishers. You will be what? A fisher of men. That's the call. That's Simon's call. So he is forgetting this morning that he is supposed to be that fisher of men. And here, Christ has died and has been resurrected. 
But then it's still not a real experience. It's so surreal to him that he is not sure what to do next and he decides he will go fish. Simon's problem, Peter's problem, the fact that he has denied the Christ. If you think about all of us, have you ever had the occasion when we have denied the Christ? Hey, we may not have publicly spoken some things, but our actions, our behaviors, the things that we think, remember Christ spoke about the things that we think, yeah? Even if we thought, have we ever had that inkling of a thought, being not sure, being in doubt? I'm sure we have, yeah? And we won't say it, right? We don't want somebody else to know. But, you know, let's face it, we all go through these moments of doubt. There are things that happen in life we can't explain. Sometimes we have to just take it for what it is. And so it's a struggle. That's the reality and that's what Simon Peter is facing this morning or this evening. So, they go out to fish. These are experienced fishermen. Remember the first occasion when we read, when he met the Christ and Christ says, just go out further, drop your net. And they got such a big catch, Simon was saying, Lord, we have been doing this all night and we didn't catch anything. Come with me now to John, the book of John, chapter 21, where we left off just now. Here's an occasion. Simon's deciding to be a fisherman again. And you know what? Everybody else decides to follow Simon. Yeah? All jump on the boat. Let's go. They are all fishermen at heart. And since I don't know what to do next, there's no instructions from Christ as to what to do next. I am now in a dilemma, so I decide I will go fish. That's the best thing I know. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and then all of them will go with you. So they went out and they got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Resembles, yeah? It resembles an occasion in Luke when he met Christ the first time, yeah? They didn't catch anything right through the night. It's difficult to imagine. Can you imagine being an experienced fisherman? Yeah? Experienced guy. You have years and years of experience catching fish and you know where the fish are, you talk to the fish practically because, you know, somehow or the other, they know when to come surrender in your nets. So, here you have Peter and his friends, fishermen, all night they're fishing and they catch nothing at all. And as they are in this dilemma of being unable to catch any fish at all, there's someone on the shore that's standing there and he shouts out to them and he says, Children, haven't you any fish? Didn't you catch any fish? You know, it's a, it's, it's a funny thing. At this juncture, Peter and his friends could decide to be dishonest. They could say, oh yeah, yeah we, we have some fish, no problem. I mean, yeah, hey, you know, it's my pride, yeah? You can get in the way. They could do that, but they didn't. There was a frank answer that came from them that no, there's no fish. We didn't catch anything at all. <laughs> Amazing that a carpenter can tell them how to fish and where to fish. You know? They get the instructions from the carpenter who is at the shore. You know, what is the size of a boat anyway? Could it be about that big? Yeah? I mean, from one side to the other. I'm, I'm just thinking, yeah? The instructions that they get from the man on the shore is to drop the nets on the other side. I'm saying, where the fish? Oh, they're on the other side. They're not here. I'm saying, whoa, you're talking about what? Maybe six feet? The width of the boat? And all the fish decide to be on the other side? Something is funny about this story, you know. But the reality is, I think they are obeying their creator. Yeah? You know, this sermon came out of... Uh, a need that we had. 
you know, someone requested for a Bible study, you know, from the radio. And so we did a follow-up and we realized this person was vision impaired. And so we said, how do we, you know, give this person a Bible study? And so we said, okay, let's go visit this person and let's talk with him. Probably we can communicate. We can't give him some material to read. So when we went there, we realized some things. Um, let me see if I can get... Ah, there you are, okay. We still have to go by Sampan to our station. This is on the way to Blakang Padang, yeah? This is our station manager. I just want to inform you and we'll come round to this person. That's uh, Brother Sitoris, and of course you recognize the man sitting in the center. I'm not going to say who he is. Um, this is our antenna. It's uh, some 70 meters up in the air, and uh, we're always, as you notice, we are the tallest structure there, and so lightning tends to come look for us every now and then, yeah? We need a lot of prayer. This is the um, new generator that we purchased to keep the system alive when uh, things, uh, when the electricity shuts down, yeah? That's what the thing looks like, the antenna tower at close up. This is Sitoris. <laughs> the way God worked is really fantastic. You see, uh, Pastor Sitoris happens to be the uh, present president of WIUM, the West Indonesia Union Mission. Remember, we are crossing borders and uh, our station is located in Indonesia. So we need their help to manage and run this. And this man is very difficult to catch. They have their own issues and problems. And at the same time, um, it's like this is a radio that is in the far end, at the edge of his territory. And why should he actually be bothered too much about it? Because there are many other fires to take care of. Uh, Sitoris turned up in Batam for a specific reason. You see, there are shipbuilding companies in Batam, yeah? And one of the shipbuilding companies happens to be a Christian, and he knows Sitoris. The last time they built this particular ship and they tried to launch it, the ship toppled during the launch. And so it's a scary thing to happen, especially when the ship is ready to be handed over and you find it topples. And so this time, the person called Sitoris and said, can you come and pray for us before our launch? And that's what he did. And of course, yeah, this launch was successful. But you know, more importantly for me, it was the fact that he was in Batam and I can't catch this man. And so we found out that he was. And so we captured him, brought him to the station, showed him everything. So he now knows what the station is and uh, he has given us his full um, word that his cooperation, WIUM, will support us. And they have been showing it in terms of the actions that they have been taking. Yeah. Now, this is the transmitter that we use as a five kilowatt. Uh, this transmitter makes a hell of a lot of noise uh, because it is designed that way. Um, it's modular and uh, you will see that, yes, it's possible to replace any parts that are spoiled, you know, in terms of a component replacement rather than, you know, having to pull down the entire transmitter for that, uh, for that maintenance. Now, this is the view from Blakang Padang to Singapore. That's our buildings. It's getting tougher these days to get our signal across from Blakang Padang to Singapore. All those buildings, because FM signals go in a straight line. When you hit a building, it bounces off the building, and if you get those bounce signals, that'll be great, yeah? So, that's to give you an idea. Now, we have our own challenges. It's a very old building that we have there, and we are not renewing that building in any way, but, you know, we'll always have a tree that falls, breaks some windows, and all sorts of things, so maintenance will have to be done. Now, this is in um, Villa Sampurna. This is a small space or a small building that we have erected in Villa Sampurna, from which we transmit through the small antennas 
to the bigger one at Blakang Padang. Yeah? Just so that you understand what the mechanics are of transmitting. Now, uh, this is our Gensat at uh, Villa Sampurna. One of our announcers, Bella, at work. We do a lot of health and uh, other programs. This is about skin problems and things like that. And so we have guest speakers who come. This is all of us, including Sitoris, at the station. So he went back with some good impressions. This is the first board meeting that we had together uh, for the year with uh, Brother Roger and the finance people from uh, WIUM and so forth. And so there's been very good progress uh, that has taken place. This is our last MD who stepped down, signed the papers, and uh, currently we have Elder Hadiono who has taken over as the MD. And this is the happy thing for me. One, because I have my man <laughs> in place and he can actually look after the company now as opposed to having somebody else that I don't know fully well looking after things. Um, I want to tell you about some of the experiences. This blind man is an active listener. He's from the Methodist Church, by the way. He's got about 25 to 35 blind people that listen to the radio and are very regular. Anytime the radio goes off air for more than a day, for any reason, our friend will walk into our office with his chair, with his bag, with his stick. Somehow he finds the way up there. That's the thing that surprises me. And he would come ask me this question. He'll say, why is the radio not working? It's a very difficult question to answer. You know, this is the reality. Yeah? Very difficult question to answer, especially to a blind man who has a need. Yeah? And a bunch of people who are actually listening. This, people at the top, um, the older lady, the young lady and so forth, to whom I'm giving some of our material, they are listeners of the radio. What they do, they record our messages, they record all the programs, and they put it onto small MP3 players, and they go to old folks' homes and they hand it out there with the headsets and ask the old people to listen. Okay, that's the thing that they do, and that's their ministry. And so I called them and I said, come to church, come meet us, you know. Uh, let me give you some more material that you can use, you know. And so, yeah, we gave them some books and other things that they took away. This lady at the bottom, she, her mom passed away recently, but she's a listener. Why? Because one day, she just happened to be tuning the radio and she ended up with 107. I'm saying, what are the odds? I showed you, remember that, that, that uh, video of uh, the, the, the sighting from Blakang Padang to Singapore? You could see all the big, huge buildings there. My signals have to beat all of the buildings and come through to your house. And that's why in some of your homes, you don't get the signal at all, you know. This lady tunes it, and she finds 107, and I'm thinking, Lord, what did you do? <laughs> you know? So, these are some of the challenges and the people that actually come across. Now, this is the man I wanted you to see. Now, he didn't want to be identified, and so I blocked out part of his face. Now, Michael is the one that asked this question. <laughs> and the sermon came out of that. He said, why was Jesus on the shore? Why was Jesus on the shore? Why was he on that shore? You think about it. Think about it. He didn't have to be there, you know. He had already appeared to the disciples in the room. He had appeared to Mary. He had proved himself to Thomas. Come, put your fingers here. Feel. Know for sure. Those that believe without having seen, they are blessed, he said, at that time. So that includes all of us. I, anybody seen Christ recently? No? Did you get a chance to feel? No, right? So you are blessed because you believe, yeah? You believe even without having seen him. Major difference. So why was Jesus on that shore? Peter. Yeah? 
very specifically for Peter. And I think also for all of us. Because you know, Peter was boiling his own stew. He had done something that he shouldn't have done. And there was no recourse, you see. There was no way his friends are going to accept him. And so Christ had to be there for Peter. These men have been toiling all night. All night. Nothing. Not a single fish. Not a single fish. Drop your nets on the right side. Whoa, they get such a catch. And you know what? The disciple that loves Jesus says, Whoa, this reminds me of a time before when he used our boats and he told us to just drop the nets out into the deep. And then we got such a catch. This is him. And Peter immediately puts on his tunic and he jumps into the water, comes down. And what does he see? On that shore, there was a fire. You know, this fire is a very important thing because it reminds Peter of him warming himself in that fire when he denied Christ. So every time he sees a fire, it pokes him, you know, in all the places where it hurts. And here, you have a fire. And on that fire, is fish. Whoa! And bread. Whoa! Wait a minute. They could catch no fish at all. All night they're toiling. Where did this fish come from? Fish. Over here. The creator. He could call a fish from anywhere. And the fish would just hop out and come to him because he is the creator. It makes a world of difference you know, for me to understand that. That he has all the resources that he needs. He doesn't require your resource or mine in reality. But he says, bring me some of your catch. Give me some of your catch. Actually, our giving him some of our catch is for our sakes, for ourselves, because we get to know a little bit about what he's capable of. We feel that we have supported him with his request. That's important. So for Peter, all of these things matter. You remember the first time that Peter was asked the question by Christ, by Jesus. He says, do you love me more than all of these? Because remember, when Peter said what he said, <laughs> he said, I... I will be still here with you even when all of these other people have left. All of these, my brethren, may leave, but I won't. That's what he said. And so the first question that comes out of Jesus' mouth to Peter is, do you love me more than these? Yeah, all of these brethren. Do you love me more than all of this? You know, if Peter was still that same impetuous person, that proud guy before that he was, he would have said, of course, I, you know, love you more than all of these. He would have done that. But this time, he comes with such humility. He says, Lord, you know I love you. That's all. He doesn't compare himself to anybody else. And two more times the question is asked. This time it goes deeper and deeper because it's the same question repeated two times. Do you love me? Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. God is expecting that each one of us has a call to do something for him. I want to tell you of something else that is very important as well. Because Peter was restored, there's something that Christ tells Peter. Let me read this out to you. Let me just read this portion out here. Yeah? This is found in Luke 22, 31. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brethren. 
Strengthen your brethren. You know, there was a time when Paul was in Jerusalem and he was uh, staying in Mark's home. Barnabas was there. Barnabas is Mark's uncle. All these uh, mission stories and you know, things that he heard sort of motivated Mark and Mark decided that he wants to be a part of all this missionary work that his uncle and Paul have been doing. And so he says, can I come with you? Well, to Paul and Barnabas, I guess it made sense. Someone young to carry the bags and look after them and so forth. Yeah, he said, come. So they brought him along. So everything was okay until they came to Cyprus and the persecution was so bad that Mark decides that this was too much and he quits and he goes back home. And you know, when you quit from something and you go back home, you know, you feel like a failure. Someone that didn't make it. And Mark was feeling that way. And he wasn't moving with anybody. He wasn't going to church. He wasn't meeting with any of the other people that, you know, knew him because everybody knew he was going on a missionary journey. Yeah, wonderful thing to do. So, in that scenario where Mark was feeling like a failure, who do you think restores Mark? Peter. Peter goes up, taps him on the shoulder and says, our church in Jerusalem needs you. Come. And he brought him back into the fold. When you have come back, what do you do? Yeah? Strengthen your brethren. That's exactly what Peter did. This morning, I want to just tell you that God has a purpose and a plan for each one of us. We may not be a Peter. We may not be stewing the way that Peter was because that was a public thing that he did. There might be private things in each one of us. You know, God knows. But God knows and so he will attend to you. He came for that specific purpose of reaching out to you and I so that we will be set free. Our reading this morning, the verse that we read, tells us very specifically that Christ came for that one purpose. You and I have issues. Don't, let's not deny that. Yeah, Let's not deny that. We all have issues. And these issues, some of them can get in the way of the progress that God intends for the church, for you, for your family, for everything else that he wants to do with you. But I want to encourage you today that if you're wet in all your effort, if you're hungry all night, you haven't produced any results for yourself or your families or whatever not you have been doing, then rest assured that he's here on the shore and he has just what you need the warmth, the fire, the food for your hunger. And he has you in mind specifically. And he's going to ask you the questions that need to be asked in order that you will respond so that you will know. It's not about other people knowing, it's about you knowing that God is with you. So I want you to go back today with the thought and the feeling that God will never forsake you for any reason. And that's what he has come for. So, this was Michael. This is our new setup where we are now able to broadcast out of um, the hall at uh, the union office um, to YouTube or anything else. Proper switching, you know. Um, this is one of our members and on the team, David. Um, we have programs that are going on board with you. There is in your bulletin inserts. Do you recognize this? You would have seen this in your bulletin inserts. Can you just reach for it and have a look? Yeah? At the back of this sheet, 
you have some more information. And that one is so that you know you don't have to depend 100% on my FM signal alone. Because, you know, on the smartphone these days, you can actually download an app and enable for you to receive. So if you have an Android, you have a way for you to receive the Android signal. This is the transmission going on. Yeah. Now the point is that I am not subject to those buildings. Those buildings are not going to get in the way of bringing the signal out to you. So we are doing our level best to give you other ways for you to receive. So please lock your phones on onto the frequency, listen to it and tell us what you think about the program because it's important. It will help us to fine tune it more. Now we come to, oh yes. This stack of papers here is all the prayer requests that we have been getting on the radio. Yeah, It's not just one or two, there's a whole lot of them and uh, Jessie and her team, there's a bunch of people who are on the, on the team of people who actually pray for these different requests. I have grandmothers asking for us to pray for their granddaughter. I have got husbands asking to pray for their wives. I've got wives coming in to pray for their family. So there's a whole lot of, you know, needs that Singapore has and the radio is meeting all of those. So help us do what we do best. This is a partnership form. Eh? It's just a pledge thing. So you can do a monthly, quarterly, yearly or one-time thing and whatever amount that you are able. Now, even if you're not able you can do like a $10 a month. Can you imagine what it's like in a year? It's 120. When you add all the 120s up, can you imagine? There's enough money for us to take care of some of the needs yeah, that the radio has. So, think about it. Pray about it. Just make sure that you follow the Lord's leading. And if He says give, then give wholeheartedly. Because our God is good. So, I want to thank you for this opportunity. One, that I have shown you some parts of the radio's needs. Two, that you understand that there are people who are actually listening and who have needs. And, you know, it means we need to have people who are doing prayer. We need to have people who are able to give Bible studies. Yeah? Go out there and do things along with these people. And there are different things that God's always surprising us with things, you know. So let's have a word of prayer as I bring this to a close. Holy Father, we thank you for blessed opportunities you give us, Lord. We realize not one of us is perfect, Father. We all have needs. And we need each other, Father, to make sure that this mission that you have given us on this earth will be fulfilled. Lord, we need to communicate your love to other people. All the knowledge in the world is not going to save us. It's the name of Jesus Christ that's going to save at the end of the day, it's the love that we bring out, which is your love to us, Lord. He that has been forgiven much has much to love. And so, Father, this morning we thank you that we are a people in need of your love. We are a people that need to be forgiven. Grant that you will wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. Guard and protect. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are patient with each one of us. Your mercies, dear Father, extend far beyond anything that we can ever imagine. So this morning, Lord, we surrender ourselves into your hands. We pray, Father, for your spirit to be with each one of us as we disperse. In Jesus' name, Amen.